think they define that. Uh, but in this case, it's actualizing purpose in your finances. Now, what I want to, a disclaimer I would like to get right out is that if you are listening to this, expecting some hot tip that, you know, will make you hammer, like they say, uh, I am afraid <laughs> I haven't got, I haven't got some, you know, incredible something you have to do uh, to, you know, make you explode in your finances. Sorry, the Kukoka. Uh, but yeah, the steps that we will be looking at today, uh, because we're in the UK anyway, and one of the things with mature markets is that the potential to get those increased savings just aren't there. But diligence, working hard, and you know, keeping at it and committing it to God, you should be able to you know sail through. All right, so. Why do we need to actualize purpose in our finances? So why, why, why do we even bother? What's, you know? Now, first is to be good stewards of what God has entrusted to us. Uh, so we know what, uh, you know, the Lord told that faithful servant, well done, thou good and faithful servant. It wasn't because he, you know, left things to chance. He actively went out to trade with his Lord's talent. So regardless of what you think, God has given each and every one of us something to occupy until he comes. So we've got to be very good stewards of what God has entrusted to us. Now to avoid stress, how many people have been broke before? <laughs> Was it a very happy time? What were you worried about? A lot. Now, the things you were worried about, were they, because that's the thing about not having money. They are the immediate things, you know, like your rent and, you know. But there's also the stage where you're even worried about what might happen. You know, it's, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, but you're like, ah, if this happens, this will sink me. And you begin to worry, you know. Uh, so, marital, I mean, like I keep saying, you know, after, you know, one of the biggest stressors of married life is finances, health, family, your mental health as well. You know, you're thinking, thinking, you know. Now, it's no surprise that, you know, when the data is taken, on average, wealthier people live longer and healthier. Uh, it's not that, you know, you can buy one extra second, but in general, People who don't worry about where their next meal is coming from, where they I mean, we even see it in our, with ourselves, people who relocate, and they tell you there are certain things they no longer worry about. You know, someone said, ah, Saturdays I used to pray and fast that when I'm cooking for the week, uh, that, you know, there won't be power cuts. And then, you know, I've come to the UK, and that problem has just gone away. You know, it's no longer... And then to be a blessing to the church of God, not a financial drain that everyone avoids. So I'm not talking about people in need, but I think you know who I'm talking about. You know, that brother that you're always avoiding because uh, you know they could be much more. You know they could do better with what God has given in their hands, but for some reason, they never seem to have that discipline, that willpower, you know, to move up to the next level is one thing after the other. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, the, the way this is going to work, so I'll give some background information, some assumptions, define a few things. Then we'll talk about positive practices to adopt. Uh, then I'll share a budget example for those who don't know what a budget is. And then negative practices to avoid savings and investments, and then we, you know, round up at the end. So, I mean, 20, 30 minutes is not is just scratching the surface uh, at this point. But, I mean, we, we pray that the Holy Spirit will, you know, guide us and give us wisdom. Uh, because one thing with, you know, having a financial talk is that everybody's situation is different. Everybody ends differently. Everyone knows where they should be. So, anything I say here can only be general, in general. And please, if you, have, if you have specific questions, there are people in the house. Uh, I seem to tell myself, my wife doesn't agree, I seem to tell myself that I'm a friendly person, that most people can, can approach me and ask questions. I don't know why she doesn't agree, but well, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a different thing. 
All right, so uh, uh, assumption. So I'm talking to UK residents, uh, workers, taxpayers, residents in the south of England, Southampton, North London, not the north of England because they have different, you know, you know. Now, what I want to say is that the UK median pays 35,000 per annum. So basically, it's a fancy way of saying if I line up what the lowest person is earning to the highest person, sort of around the middle is about 35. That's usually also about what average uh, annual salary is. Now, the median household income is about 45,000 pounds. So we're talking about 70 million households. So what you can just start thinking about where am I on that, you know, in relative, in rela yeah, in rela the reason I'm saying this is because, especially when you are working as a professional person, you always know that one person who is making a, a hundred thousand, who is making a hundred and fifty thousand, and you, in th for context, you don't seem to realize that only very, very few people make that kind of money. So there's always a tendency to say, ah, if I made a bit more, yeah, it's always good to make a bit more. But if I made a bit more, I could save more, I could be free of financial worries. But really, only very few people make over 100. If you make it, that's great. We thank God for you. That's not to say that if you are working towards that, you shouldn't aim high. But it's just a bit of context, as in what is everybody making? So if, you're make, if your household income is about 100K, you're already better than 93% of the households in the UK. Uh, so think about it, top 10%. If it's 75, you're better than 84. If it's 60K, you're already better than 70%, which is just to tell you that, you know, those earnings are not really, uh, there's always that one person making 200 or 1 million or buying a Ferrari. But those are very, very, you know. Now, Assets and liabilities. I have money in the bank to my name. That's an asset. I have a house, even though it's not fully paid for the bit that is, you know, uh, my, you know, my whatever. That's an asset. The liabilities, everything, you know, in the minus column. You know, all the debts, all the basic, forgive my distance, all the mortgages that I have not paid for, the car loans, you know. Now, the key to actualize purpose in your finances is to, you know, make, have a positive net worth. So it's not as if if all the creditors come to your door today, you are already, you know, uh, minus. So increase assets, decrease liabilities. So how do you do this? You manage your financial activities, revenue generation, expenditure. So maximize how much you're getting in, reduce how much you're giving out. In simple terms, you know, budgeting, savings, investments, making smart decisions, and planning properly. You know, we've talked about why it's important to have, a, you know, a positive net worth. Now, as has been stressed in previous discussions, God will not do for you what he has given you the means to accomplish. God has given you a talent. God has, you know, put you through school, helped you. You know, now you are working. You now have to live responsibly. Now, I'll put a caveat there. I always put a caveat there that there may be seasons of life where your net worth is low or negative. You know, if you've sold everything, you know, in Africa and come to the UK, you might be basically starting all over. Uh, that is fine as long as you know where you're going. Yeah. It's not that you're picking up debts here and there, these sales, that sales, buying this, you know, without knowing how much, how you pay. Uh, so God would help us. God who has brought us here. God who has made us listen to this today. He knows all our circumstances. He knows, you know, he will hold us by the hand. And we have testimonies. I remember when I was a student. I don't want to think about it, but it happens. Uh, so it's always work hard, you know, be diligent, and then trust in God, and God will, you know, give you the desires of your heart. So positive practices to adopt, okay? Pay your tithes. So this isn't a question of, oh, this is going to talk about tithes. This is a, mm -mm -mm. If you as a Christian believe that everything I have is from God, then it's not a million miles to say, God, you've given me the strength to work. You've given me the health. There are people who are in the hospital. There are people, in fact, you even think back to your class, maybe in college or university, were you the smartest person? 
were you one of the smartest? But I look back and I'm thinking, there are people that, you know, were so good, but where are they today? Uh, it could not all have been my actions. It's just God. And this, we are talking about God here. When you tell him, God, yes, it might be tight, God, it might, you know, but yes, I appreciate, I acknowledge you. Uh, take your own and leave it for him. It is not a question of what are they doing with the money? What are they, you know, where is our money? Mm -mm. Give it to him. Tell him to take care of it. And God, who owes no man, uh, will surely bless that remember, uh, remember, um, remainder. Now, make and stick to a budget. There's no point making a budget if you won't stick to it. Uh, preferably monthly, so that it will be on the uh, next slide. So there's the 50, 30, 20 guideline, which says 50% uh, on your needs, 30% on your wants, and 20% on, you know, debt and uh, what, savings. But due to current living crisis, you may not uh, have much of a choice. <coughs> and then when doing the uh, budget, ask people, Check on the internet for benchmarks. Sorry. And use this to examine your budget. So, <coughs> if I'm paying rent of £5,000 a month, by the way, is that good? Is that bad? Rent, not mortgage. Is that good? Is that bad? <coughs> if I can afford it, is it wrong? Thank you very much. Yeah. You can afford it, yes. But wouldn't it be better to get a mortgage? So it's that sort of thing. Review your spend. So after you've done the budget and the end of the month, where did the money go? Make that, so review that spends versus your budget and make your adjustments accordingly. Do I need to cut back or do I need to increase my budget? That's, uh, that's what that means. Invest in yourself. So either extra training, being diligent at work, doing your work well so that you get promoted because there's nothing as good as increasing that money coming in. Uh, sometimes, in fact, with inflation, that's the bad thing about it. Everything going out is increasing. But what's coming in is, you know, at least we live in a country where, because of some of the tales I've heard from back home, uh, the money coming in might be the same, but you've seen how quickly it's eroded in the past two months. Live within your means, goes without saying. Now, be intentional about utilities usage. So, power, you know, electricity, gas, is one of the biggest, you know, outgoings for many people. But there are little things you can do just to reduce. I mean, don't leave lights on, uh, you know, monitor your this thing. Don't leave your electric fan on. If, if, if possible, swap the electric fan for an electric blanket. Carry out adequate planning for retirement and pensions. There will be a time when you, we can work no more. No Look into that your pension. What is going into it? Should I top it up? Don't leave it until it's too late. So that's something that, you know, we... Now, if you're in debt, start an intentional and realistic payment plan to be debt-free by a certain date, uh, date. Like I always say, when you're in a hole, you stop digging. Uh, you find a way to come out of the hole. All right, so this is just a quick what a budget should look like. Uh, what I've said here is that uh, this is a couple, so a two, a four-person household, uh, both husband and wife are making about 30. Uh, so they are still better than, you know, the household is still in the top 30% of the, you know, uh, of the UK population. Uh, so this is what the, so the first thing I would point out there is earnings before tax and NI, £5,000. Earnings after tax and NI, nearly about a fifth of that has gone on tax and NI. So you have nearly 900 pounds on tax. That has got to hurt, but I mean, it's the reality. And this isn't just a high income. This, this example is not even for a high income, you know, earning household. 
as you earn more, you pay more tax. If you were paying into a pension or some salary sacrifice, you would, you know, your take home is actually even less than that. So I've put you tight there at ten percent. So if you want to, pay, uh, I think uh, when Pastor is sending out the presentation, there will be a copy of this spreadsheet as well, so that you can plug in your own numbers and sort of see where you are. Uh, tights have put that as ten percent. So don't I've put husband and wife, but do not uh, worry about how it splits. Uh, you know the columns for husband and wife. All it, that matters is that they have to add up to that uh, third column. So rent and mortgage about thirteen hundred. I think that's basically that's average for what a you know a renter lives in Southampton, which, uh, truth be told, can be quite expensive compared to those that have a mortgage. Uh, council tax about 160. So these are the things you have to pay. They are your needs. Uh, the advice was to aim for 50 percent, but in this example, they are paying about 78 percent of that just on needs. Uh, so home broadband is that a need? A few years ago, it was a nice to have. Now I don't think anyone can go without home broadband. Uh, car insurance, groceries, uh, child care costs is quite a big chunk. Uh, so if you know how to reduce it by maybe working from home and then obviously you have more take-home pay uh, at the end of, you know, more disposable income. But yeah, 850, some people will like you that that won't go very far these days. With It's over, at, sorry, out, I first started with 1,000, but I had negative leftover for savings in this example. So, <laughs> so I had to adjust it. Uh, but yes, 800 was what I was paying for Malachi, what, 12 years ago, 11 years ago. So uh, that's if you can even find the space. Uh, so if you can work from home or you have other arrangements, that would go a long way. Uh, now, once, other insurance, so home insurance, mobile insurance, drainage, I mean, it, that might not apply to you. Uh, TV, so your Netflix, your Spotify, can you do without it? Can you watch uh, what they call it, free videos on YouTube and you know, skip that? I mean, it's up to you. Eating out is always cheaper to cook at home, take it into work, but you know, sometimes you treat yourself. Uh, other miscellaneous sports, leisure, so when you have children, going to the park. So that you can, you know. Now, I've put black tax. Does everyone know what black tax means? I haven't put a figure uh, because it's different for everyone. Some people don't pay anything. Uh, I've put contingencies up there for needs. But the black tax, yeah. As a black person, the tax you pay. <laughs> uh, the tax you pay. Uh, I don't know how many people have got lemonade accounts? That's not to send to people in the UK, is it? That's not because you want to send money to people in the UK. Yeah, so contingencies have not put any figures because ideally it should be maybe something you get from savings if you've got anything saved. So if something breaks, you know, how does it get fixed? It yeah, it could be monthly or so. And then debt repayment, so you could have credit cards or other loan repayments uh, or car loans. Uh, so that's, that's uh, well, leftover for savings. So in this example, you only have 65 pounds left over for savings, which you would argue doesn't really go, you know, very far. But that's just to show you the sort of challenges we face. In the, so this is, you know, so when you think about, I have not actually done a budget. Money just comes in. I don't know, maybe before the end of the month, I'm already, or I, it's very easy for it to run away. Uh, and you have nothing left over. And in that case, you are now worrying and thinking, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. So you've got to be intentional about these things. Say, ah, this is where the money is going. Oh, I need to cut back on this. I need to do this. I need to. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not one of those ones that you can just let uh, go. Amen. And there are negative uh, practices to avoid, which will follow, you know, uh, a lot of what I said with the uh, budgeting. So now, unnecessary debt due to indiscipline and uh, instant gratification. So there's a sale, uh, something catches your eye. Uh, I don't know if they still give people credit cards like that these days uh, because I know when I 
turned up as a student. As I went to the bank, they just gave me a credit card. Uh, I mean, oh, that was good, but, you know, I don't know if that's... But, I mean, credit cards. Now, there might be a lot of charities in the UK, but this is not an altruistic society. Uh, other than, yeah, okay, food banks and all that. If you see a deal, you need to ask, uh, is this for my benefit? Uh, if it looks too good to be true, is it for my benefits? Yeah, there are credit offers, but not every deal is a deal. I mean, credit cards, they've got their charges as well. They've got their interest charges. Uh, so, yeah, they are quite happy for you to maintain that balance as long as you're giving them the, you know, the credit card, uh, well, interest, interest charges. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Uh, never lose sight of that. I know someone who has got a very, very big screen TV. And any time he sees a 65-inch TV, he's like, mm, this, is, this is small, this is small. I think for someone who grew up when 14-inch TVs were the norm, uh, if you had a 21-inch, you were a big man. Now everybody, you know, godliness, with, especially in this society where credit is so easy, uh, you just take the car loan, just this thing, you want it now, 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 now. Car PCP deals are not necessarily for the consumer's benefit. Uh, if you have to take it, know that you can afford it, know that you know. But still, I still tell people, if you can buy a car that is just a few years old, you're not missing anything. It's like phones. You know, there was a time when a new car had all the features. But now I think it's just recycling or, you know, uh, you don't need the, as soon as you drive it off the lots, you know, it's a 73 or what was it now? It's going to be 24 edge next month. As soon as you drive it out, that's 10% off. And you want to sell it the next day, you're never getting, you know. So godliness with God, and the one that is two, three years old still has all the features. Uh, but somebody has taken a lot of that, you know, depreciation. Yeah, this one, the next one, well, it depends on what, how you see it. So you're yeah, the rich relative abroad, you know. And everybody is uh, taxing you and this thing. Now, I'm not saying do not give. But I'm try I think most people have a very good idea of what, what I mean here. Is, uh, so they have a very different idea of what it is, you know, what life abroad really is like, you know. Uh, it's maybe the, the land flowing with milk and honey. What I'm saying is that do not feed their fantasies. Do not always, uh, what do you call it, advertise yourself on social media. You know, like pastor will say, oh, yeah, taking photographs in front of Buckingham Palace. You see, you know. And everybody, ah, this guy must be doing good. But your account is in overdraft. Uh, no, have your limits. Uh, yes, we are here for a reason. Yes, we can be a light to our family. Uh, but you have to also have your, put your mental health, you know, uh, first. Now, partaking in dodgy or unproven in investment schemes. Uh, has anyone invested in Bitcoin? As a rule, do not, you know, avoid schemes that you do not understand. Uh, so if you don't understand what it's like and how, avoid schemes. Now, the stock market is another one. It is possible to make a living off the stock market. But I think it needs a certain amount of involvement. Now, avoid people who will tell you, oh, we have a tip for you. This stock is only going to go up and up and up. Uh, because most times they don't know what they are talking about. Uh, we've heard of the high-profile uh, investment houses that have lost money, uh, simply. And there was an, I think there was a, an experiment, I think it was about 1987, where they had, they had some stock brokers, you know, they gave them some stocks and said, pick these stocks, tell us the ones that would, you know, win, the ones that would go up. So the stock uh, brokers picked their stocks, uh, so, yeah, these ones in the next year, they will, you know, you'll make money off these ones. And what the researchers did was that they got a chimpanzee and they got a dart board and they put the stocks on the dart board and they got the chimpanzee to throw the darts on the dart board. And whatever the, wherever the darts landed, they picked that as the chimpanzee stocks. And the chimpanzee speaks, outperformed most of the stockbrokers. So make of that what you will. Whether those people, they really know what they are talking about. 
financially detrimental relationship. So it's, is it this friend that is always taking you, oh, there's a party here. We have enough uh, doings in church. You know, at least there's enough birthdays. Uh, come and meet people. It doesn't cost you money. It's not every or oh, one bear party that you have to be, you know, where there is a, you know, somebody who lives for today, today, you know. Even the men, you know, as in, sorry to be your know, thing, but, you know, that side chick, how much is she costing you? You know, it's, it's things like that. So financially detrimental relationships, negative friends and influencers, uh, please, uh, you know, stay, stay away. Recommended investments, I'm not an investment advisor, so I can't recommend anything. I'll just say ask God for wisdom on where to invest. Property, if you're not buying for anything else, at least owning your own home is a start. You know, because then your rent isn't, you know, going just like that. Overpay your mortgage if you are able, uh, especially as immigrants, we tend to buy uh, houses later in life. You know, because by the time you come and you work and settle before you, uh, what they call it, put down a deposit, most people have, you know, are well on their second decade of house ownership. So if you can overpay your mortgage so that you're not paying uh, beyond retirement, that, that would be helpful. And also, obviously, if you are saving money, when we talk about black tax, can we at least as adults try to break that cycle with our children? Uh, if we are sending to our parents, yes, we know. But do you actually want your children to be doing that? Do you want to saddle them with that? Uh, it's something to think about. Uh, that's, that's, that, that's, uh, God will give us the, you know, the, the wisdom. Now, once you have saved, engaged the services of a professional, you know, when you want to talk about investments, how to make my money go further, but know what your risk appetite is. Uh, are you the one who wants, you know, big returns? In which case, you know, they can give you, uh, put your money in a uh, riskier investment. Or are you the one who just needs, you know, slow and steady? Uh, but, yeah, know that. So, uh, whatever I've not said or whatever, uh, you know, is left, God and his Holy Spirit will give us, you know, the wisdom uh, to be able to. Are there any questions? Are there, am I allowed to take questions or few minutes yeah any questions let's <laughs> elizabeth has question yeah let's 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 bow our heads let's thank god for even this opportunity you know that he has reminded us none of us is perfect some are better than others some have been better stewards but first, let's ask God for forgiveness for all those times when we have been, you know, wasteful. For all those times when we've robbed him of his own bits. For all those times.